So Leslie is the general manager with SEPTA who has been uh, with us from the beginning. So Leslie, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us. So thank you for asking me uh, to join. Uh, I was asked to share some of my personal story as well as um, what I've done as far as, uh, you know, encouraging uh, women in the trades. First of all, I hope everyone can see I'm proudly wearing my SEPTA Women in the Trades uh, shirts and, um, you know, very happy uh, to, again to be here uh, with you today. So what I'd like to start off uh, by saying is uh, part of my uh, own story is I worked for an environmental engineering firm and uh, did a lot of construction work with them. And, you know, I, I've been there. I've been on sites where there's no women's locker room. I've been on sites where there's no bathroom where I was told, oh, when we get to the site, we'll stop off and go to the bathroom, not realizing they meant there'd be a tree for the guys to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then, um, you know, often being the only female or, or one of a handful of females on, on the site. Um, I've been on site um, where there's been women owned construction firms and uh, right off the top, they've been asked, you know, where's your dad, assuming that their fathers own the firms and that's how they got, you know, their jobs. And so, so many times I've had to use humor and, you know, deescalate certain situations, part of why I believe so strongly uh, in getting women in the trades. But I also know that there are a lot of men and women who are willing to help and are willing to promote and are willing to um, encourage um, advancing women. And I also know how important it is for us to network together and us to talk about it and um, you know, to, to make sure that uh, we're all here to support each other as well. Um, I was a county commissioner uh, for Montgomery County and there we were the highest, um, we were the highest manufacturing in the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, had the most uh, manufacturing uh, jobs as well as businesses and went to our tech schools and I visited and I saw so many of their programs there and I saw women succeeding and I saw them loving a lot of these manufacturing jobs. I particularly met one young woman um, who went straight from high school into a manufacturing job. She had what I thought was an amazing job, which was at the largest chocolate factory in our county and actually one of the top three chocolate factories in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And her job was to take large chocolate bars off of the assembly line um, and load them back on uh, for the next step. And she loved that job. And uh, so I, I got to see um, how she was able to navigate um, her path forward. Uh, also, when I was over at PennDOT, um, I had the honor of being uh, the secretary of the, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for five years. And I also got to see um, women in maintenance. I saw women doing paving work and plow driving and being mechanics and being machinists. Um, and I also saw how they were outnumbered in many of their teams as well and how it was important for us to bring them together. In fact, we started our first women in maintenance group there. Uh, it was only half a dozen uh, women here in Southeastern Pennsylvania when we first started. We now have chapters throughout the Commonwealth and they can share stories. Um, one story that I do remember was from a woman named Michelle and we were out there to, um, to introduce the governor to the paving team and the plowing team that had just gotten us through a very big snowstorm, um, as well as a construction project. And there was one woman on the team, I introduced the governor to the entire team. And she came up to me afterwards and she, she shared with me how she has been, um, you know, she, she felt that the rest of her team wasn't giving her a fair shot, that the equipment was very heavy for her, that she wasn't able to do every single job uh, that each crew member was doing and she felt she wasn't being treated fairly. And I listened to her. Um, I got uh, a group of other women for her to talk to and I'm gonna cut straight to the end of the story because I think it's important. Um, she felt that the guys were listening to her and felt that she was always complaining. And to my surprise, when the, I asked the women to talk to her and mentor her, they felt the same. 
and they let them know that they had all done those jobs and this is how they did them and that she has to you know try these different things and they were willing to show her how to do it and they did and credit to her uh, she then admitted afterwards that uh, she she was just not um, putting in a full effort. And once she did that, um, her relationship started uh, to to strengthen on her own team. But also now she had the women uh, to network with. And um, you know, I'm not saying everything's perfect, but uh, definitely definitely a lot better. Uh, I had another experience also with the governor when we went to celebrate a new agreement at one of the ports here in southeastern Pennsylvania and one of the female forklift drivers came up to me. She was the only female on that team and she let me know how she was a single mother and she was able to raise three children um, from the very good salary that she was earning. She had a shore house uh, in addition to the house that she lived in in Philadelphia and that it had been a wonderful job for her. And she wanted to encourage other women uh, to be able to take on jobs uh, like the one that she had. And um, I also saw when I was secretary of uh, PennDOT that there just weren't enough women you know, in our marketing materials, in our recruiting materials. And everyone knew every time I had to sign off on something, I'd be looking, I'd be looking for the diversity and that included gender parity in how we marketed um, our positions. And we changed that. And we actually put out videos uh, with female snowplow drivers. And we started, guess what? Recruiting more female snowplow drivers. Uh, so that was all um, you know, leading up uh, to the time that uh, I got to come here at SEPTA. And um, I'm very proud of uh, where SEPTA is. And um, I want to thank Wink, uh, absolutely, for helping women to identify um, the path to rewarding careers in the trades here and uh, having these events just like uh, you're having today. I want to give a special thanks to um, Colleen May and Jenny Barrett uh, for their work in supporting um, Wink, but also supporting uh, women in the trades here at SEPTA. Um, I also uh, want to talk about um, when I was secretary in 2015, I remembered hearing about SEPTA uh, creating this internal group uh, to put a brighter focus on the trades as a viable career for women. And now that I'm here, I'm so happy that they did that before I got here, and I'm happy that I get to be here and help out. Uh, so we're now focused on formalizing the committee and the structure and uh, the achieving the goal of uh, increasing our numbers here of women in the trades. We currently have 30 women in skill craft positions, as well as eight women in general helper positions. Uh, some of the skilled crafts that women hold here at SEPTA include um, traction power, substation maintainer, signals maintainer, RV electronic specialist, electronic and electrical lab technicians, mechanical repairer, vehicle equipment body mechanic, rail vehicle and equipment body mechanics, rail maintainer, construction equipment operator. Yesterday I got to um, tour our um, Wayne Junction where um, our air brakes are rehabbed and our locomotives are taken apart and put back together. And I got to meet two of the women uh, who help us with that work. And that was um, really good to hear from them. And um, while these are all good things, um, I do wanna point out that our studies have shown that the labor market that SEPTA draws from, uh, we have five, over 5% of women available uh, to fill these skill craft positions. And right now that compares to where we are, where our utilization is just at 1.5%. So we know that we can do better. We know that there are more women out there. We want SEPTA to be um, an attractive job for them, a place where they wanna work, a place where they know that they will be welcomed. And uh, we are working uh, to make sure that they will feel supported here as well. And so we continue uh, to work uh, on that. Uh, to achieve parity for women in skilled trade positions, uh, we proactively are seeking various outreach efforts. Uh, we have a goal of 3.7% or approximately um, getting up to 75 um, women in these types of positions. 
Um, in the past, we've held outreach um, programs, but obviously with the restrictions that COVID has um, uh, you know, presented to us and everybody, uh, we've had to scale back a little bit, but we will continue to make sure that uh, we, we um, go ahead once we can all gather safely. We have found ways. Uh, to reach out virtually and obviously to do training and, and reach out uh, to people as well. And so uh, as general manager, I am committed uh, to making sure uh, that we recruit with these goals in mind. I'm committed to making sure that we hire and promote more, more women and more women in the trades here um, at SEPTA over uh, the next five years. And uh, so just wanted to share that uh, story with you and uh, give you our full support. I think um, opportunities uh, for women uh, are particularly important at any time. But right now, during COVID, where we see women losing jobs at a much faster rate than men, and uh, we understand that with child care issues and um, you know, we understand that with uh, children being also schooled virtually, we know there aren't as many activities um, available to them. Uh, we know, um, you know, that the majority of, of home care still um, remains uh, with women. Uh, and so uh, seeing the job numbers, particularly in December, where almost 100% of the job loss in December was attributed to women it is very difficult to see. You know, we have come a long way and we were moving in the right direction. And I feel COVID, as is with many things um, that we deal with right now, has, has really made us take many steps backwards. And so we really all have to re energize and regroup and re emphasize our efforts. And uh, with that, I see in the chat, you were asking if I could take some q and I'm more than happy to do so. Um, and uh, again, just thanks for working with us. Uh, it's wonderful that WINK exists. It's wonderful that SEPTA can tap into it. Again, I just wanna mention Colleen May and Jennifer Barrett, they are um, here and uh, they can serve as contacts if any other questions come up or if there's any opportunities for us to um, collaborate and work together. So with that, I'm happy to answer uh, any questions you may have if uh, there's time. You are great. getting a, a whole host of thank yous in the chat from folks that are, are in the group. And so we really appreciate you coming out. I do hope maybe you can stick around or join us on one of the other two days. We have some awesome stuff in store. I am sure, and uh, I will. I will definitely be updated if I cannot be there myself. Uh, the last mm -hmm. thing I'd like to say is, look, we're always looking for, um, you know, uh, partners. Uh, whether it is, you know, two-year programs uh, that are educating um, women in, um, you know, mechanics. So we always need diesel mechanics. We always need other types of mechanics. Uh, obviously, we all always need um, other um, trades jobs as well. Um, that's really ha has been in, in the past um, when I was at PennDOT and also, you know, here at SEPTA. That's been a wonderful pipeline for us when okay. we, um, you know, work with uh, those types of training programs. So um, looking forward to, to reconnecting and obviously, um, you know, finding out more about um, transit trades um, as, as so we move forward. And I actually have one other question um, because this I didn't I found this out by talking to uh, someone from SEPTA in a, in a meeting that we had uh, for Wink. So uh, you know how uh, high schools will have like career days and that type of thing. Does SEPTA have these these types of events uh, throughout the year? I understand COVID is like putting a, a, a monkey wrench in a lot of things, but on the normal. <laughs> Uh, in a normal environment, uh, does SEPTA have those types of events where the public can come and find out more about careers? Yeah, I believe we do. Again, I okay. started the job in January and COVID came quick on my heels. Oh, yeah, so I didn't yeah. get a regular year here okay. before we began, but I know I did participate when I was at PennDOT in, okay. uh, in, in those types of uh, of, of, of trainings and things. Again, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Jenny and, and Colleen to give uh, 
to give uh, the, the, the exact answer, but I know that we haven't been able to gather in groups um, and we and uh, definitely, you know, even our training has been cut down. I think the maximum is 15 uh, when we do okay. trainings, depending on uh, where we do them, how we can do them, if we can keep them outside. And so I know that a lot of has stopped. And also we will be rethinking just like a lot of a lot of businesses we will be rethinking everything we do. And what does post COVID look because we know that that the world has changed. Um, it's not going to, you know, rubber band back to what it was um, in January. Um, and so we really need to rethink of, of how we do things, but it's an opportunity for us to be better. And it's an opportunity for us to really, you know, review everything and come out stronger, which I know we will. And so we may tweak things um, as, as, you know, as people yeah. may be used to, we did something a certain way, we might be tweaking them, but I guarantee you we'll be better. Yes. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. And um, at, while while you were speaking, um, uh, Jenny and Colleen both were answering that uh, question. So uh, I know within week we do have a, a speakers bureau and there are quite a few uh, SEPTA uh, trades women that are part of the speakers bureau um, and go out, um, well, not go out, probably do virtual Zoom meetings um, with the schools. Um, to talk about their careers and that. Um, and then Jenny also mentioned that Women Build SEPTA is an event um, that is held every year, but obviously uh, yeah. COVID has, you know. I see Tanya just uh, chimed in here. I know we have uh, a couple yes. members on your steering committee, including- Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, and Gwendolyn. Um, yeah. So we you know we're really yes. proud that not only have we we have a strong group here, but that they also volunteer for these really important and, and, you know, identifying the fact that we all, we all need to work toward, you know, attracting more women in these mm -hmm. good paying, um, you know, family supporting um, meaningful jobs. Yes. And so once again, I thank you. I do appreciate you taking the time and even answering some of our questions. Absolutely. So um, we appreciate you.